skier. The Giants are seven and two, fellow Giants fans. Seven and two. I think we're like. One of two or three seven-win teams in the league. Obviously, the Philadelphia Eagles are the only eight-win team in the league. The Vikings, I thought, were going to be seven and two as well. They go into the game seven and one. They look like they're about to lose, but an insane catch by Justin Jefferson sets them up. Unfortunately, Dalvin Cook drops that game winner, but then Josh Allen like fumbles the ball on the goal yard line, and they they recover, and now the Vikings are the second eight-win team, eight team in the league. I say all that to say that the NFL is very top-heavy right now. And I am so glad that the Giants are part of that top heaviness. There's a lot of people been saying there's not necessarily a lot of good teams in the NFL this year, especially when it comes to record. Uh, the Giants are certainly one of those few good teams, man. This this team, and yeah, we had a horrible loss against Dallas and against Seattle. Both games were like, <laughs> both games were losses that were so questionable with everything on the field. But I'm glad that we're sitting here at 7-2. and two. They did what they were supposed to do. And that is run the football. If you guys watch Young Guns when we previewed the game and I talked about it, um, and you follow me on Twitter, you know that I tweeted about it. The Texans coming into this game had the worst, and it wasn't close, by far the worst rushing defense in the NFL. They were letting up, I think it was either 180 or 189, one out of those two numbers, yards per game rushing. And in the last three games, they let up 209 yards a game. Saquon Barkley finished with a career high, I think it was 35 attempts. Uh, with 152 rushing yards and a touchdown, they 100% rode this man all the way to the victory. Uh, the defense also was the second biggest part. Saquon, biggest part of us winning this game. Defense, biggest part of us winning this game as well. Super opportunistic. We had two straight turnovers in the red zone. Um, and then we had a, I think it was a fumble recovery, then a pick. Did we have a second pick? I feel like we had three turnovers this game i could be wrong i know that the O'Shane zimenez sack fumble was overturned because they said his hand was going forward uh but just a great defense all around we held the texans to i think it was three points in the first half just superb absolutely superb i love what the defense did today the offense almost squandered it and we definitely squandered those back-to-back -back turnovers should have definitely been able to turn those into at least you know three or seven points but it is what it is. Just a game where we were supposed to come in and dominate because the Texans are the worst team in the NFL record-wise. Now, I don't think they're a terrible team, and this is going to sound weird because if you've paid attention a little bit to their games, they've always been in every single game with a team that they've played, and they were for sure in this game with us, although that was more of the Giants kind of letting them hang around type of scenario that them actually keeping up with us. Like, if you looked at the Philadelphia game last week, I'd say up until... The last six minutes of the fourth quarter, they were really in that game, and then Philly pulled away. But good job, man. Um, good job all around to the coaching staff, Brian Dayball. Uh, he was getting a little too passionate on the sideline. Like I like to see him when he gets fired up, but uh, like in the first half, I feel like he was overreacting a little bit. Like he was screaming basically every time the camera turned on him. And in my mind, I was like, I kind of want you to have a little bit more composure. Like you're coming off the bye week, you're screaming at your players. They're making mistakes. And I think this was this was the most penalized first half we had all season long. Like the offensive line just kept getting false starts. Um, you know, uh, you had Jack Anderson. <laughs> this man was getting torn and ripped to shreds by him. Of course, you had the Kenny Galladay drops. I think in the first half, the first one, a lot of people defended Galladay. They said the ball was thrown out a little too far in front. It touched his hands. And I guess I'm one of the few people that said it touched his hands and he's getting paid $72 million. I'd like to see a little bit more effort to pull in. Whatever, that doesn't matter because the second catch, everybody agrees. Or the second target, everybody agrees, was a complete drop by him. Right in the numbers, wide open, dropped. Dayball had enough of him. Put in the guy we got off the Bills practice squad, Isaiah Hodgins, who funnily enough, looks so very similar to Galladay. His build is the same and he wears number 18. And he plays kind of the same as well. And Isaiah Hodgins made such a giant impact this game. He was great. I love to see it. I hope it's something consistent. Um, part of me wants to think that it is because Bills fans were very angry when we grabbed them off their practice squad. But I think Isaiah Hodgins is somebody that we're going to have to lean upon because there's not too many people to lean upon in this, in this receiving uh, group right here going into the future. And he looks good. You know what I'm saying? Is it too early to say Isaiah Hodgins is that guy? Probably. But I really loved what I saw out of him. Darius Slayton, 
of course, got to talk about Darius Slayton. That huge 54-yard touchdown was such a momentum changer. And, and shout out to Daniel Jones, too. Daniel had 77 yards passing in the first quarter, y'all. Um, and I'm going to get to my Kafka because I know you guys know that I am not happy with my Kafka this game. But Daniel Jones was really, really good this game. And that throw that he had to Slayton that turned into a 54-yard touchdown deserves a little bit more credit. All the credit in the world was Slayton because he made one guy miss and then he outran everybody. But I thought Daniel was going to take the sack. Somehow got it out to him. Um, the defense, Dexter Lawrence is an all-pro. Give that man his flowers. Two sacks this game. I think he's up to six sacks on the season. He's uh, now creating a new career high for himself, and he's on pace for something like 11, um, 10 or 11 sacks. He's having a scary identical year to what Leonard Williams had in 2020. I might have to double-check this, but I'm pretty sure they're even the same age when they had those seasons because Leo had it for us in 2020, and that was the fifth year of his rookie contract. Dexter is having it for us in 2022, and this is, let's see, 19, 20, 21. This is the fourth year of his rookie contract. So, like, scary identical seasons, but I love it. And speaking of Leo, Leo had a really good game today as well. I feel like this is the, if he's getting, he's getting back to what he was after that injury. Let's talk about, um, I guess, Mike Kafka. And every time I go on a rant on Mike Kafka, and it seems weekly at this point, I have to specify all these coaches deserve all the credit in the world and tremendous praise for the job that they're doing with a Giants team that honestly nobody thought would be 7-2 at this point in the season. Nobody thought would be playoff bound, and, and we are legitimately one of the best teams in the league and playoff bound. They deserve all the credit in the world for that, and Mike Kafka is included. But they also deserve the criticism when it's deserved, and... And you guys know me. For weeks, it feels like I've been coming on here and saying, I don't know why Mike Kafka is so scared of running the ball. He passes it way too much. We need more balance to run the football. Involve Saquon more. Involve Matt Breida more. <laughs> at a good amount of time in this game, I'd say like at the entire second quarter of this game, we ran the ball way too damn much. And even in the third quarter. And it's like... How do you do the exact opposite? Usually I'm complaining about you not running the ball enough. Now I'm complaining about you running the ball too much. It's just there needs to be a balance. Like if we had better mixing of the play calling and involved some passing plays in the second quarter, because Daniel showed that he was actually cutting this Texans pass defense up in the first quarter, we could have legitimately been up like 30 to 10 or 42 to 10 or something crazy like that. I feel like at times we just ran the ball too much and we ended up for countless situations during this game at a third and 10 or greater and it caused us to go three and out a lot once again that opportunistic defense absolutely showed out today and they kept us in the game but the offensive play calling kept the texans in the game as well either way we came out with the win so every time i come on and say this more often than not we come out the win i'm like should i really be complaining i have like a dilemma within myself or should i just be like we came out with the win. Maybe it's all part of the play, uh, the play calling plan. I don't know, but I just want a bit more balance on the offense. That's all I think we should have a bit more balance because you can't tell me I'm the only person that feels like the Texans were up until we scored that field goal legitimately had a chance to come back in this game. It seems like the Giants are addicted to just winning by like a score or just a little more than a score every single game either way came out with the win seven and two a lot of praise to go around definitely a lot of fixes to go around as well we host detroit next week uh that should be a fun one it's going to be the second game of the year that i'm attending can't wait uh that's it for now guys you put your thoughts down below and i'm out hey guys thanks for watching thank you for checking out my channel the hub here on giants youtube make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video like it share and subscribe and i'm out